The following podcast contains references to the consumption of alcohol. If you are not of legal drinking age, please do not consume alcohol. Also, if you are of legal drinking age, please drink responsibly. Magic Cocktail Hour. My name is Ryan, and my favorite Hargreaves sibling is Klaus. And I'm Matthew, and my favorite Hargreaves sibling is that stabby stabby knife boy who can also maybe control... Can he control metal? Is he Magneto? Diego, whatever. <laughs> I feel like we'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a podcast where we like to have a drink, and try to be succinct about various topics. Uh, This week, we're talking about the Umbrella Academy, season one. So Slash book one. (laughs) Slash book one. So if you have not consumed that media and don't want any spoilers, maybe skip this episode. It's cool. Yeah, and I'm also going to throw out there probably WandaVision spoilers, <laughs> because that's what I've been thinking about a lot lately. So if you've not seen up to s- episode six yeah, of WandaVision, also spoilers, but not... It's it's a sort of a quantum state of spoilers where there's probably going to be some, but <laughs> it's not what we're talking about. Matthew, what are you drinking tonight? Tonight, I'm drinking a Moscow Mule, but it's not got vodka in it, so I don't know if you can call it a Moscow Mule. So, ginger ale with lime. Ginger beer with lime. Oh. <laughs> and, yeah, um, it's an experience. <laughs> what are you drinking, Ryan? Uh, I am drinking a watermelon kiwi truly because Ooh. I bought a 12 pack of truly. It's fine. This is probably my least favorite flavor in the pack. Is it better or worse than that time we drank a bunch of white claw? I'm going to say better. I feel like truly's flavor is better. Um, this one though, and I feel like with a lot of like watermelon, like seltzer waters, like it always tastes like a watermelon rind, not like the fruit. And so it always just has like a weird, not the part you want. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I I don't, on my mind's tongue, what it tastes like to me without having tasted it before would be like. Oh, what is that? Is it Fanta? Just like sickeningly sweet, sugary <laughs> fruit flavor? Uh, no, it's it. No, it's not. It's very much like a white claw, and the like. It's it tastes like seltzer water with a hint of a fruit. They thought about. <laughs> <laughs> they thought about some fruit while making this. <laughs> um. So the flavor is very light. But it's enough to where you notice that it tastes like a watermelon rind. But I'm going to drink it anyway, because I mm-hmm. opened it, and my mother did not raise a quitter. Um, would you say it has a subtle bouquet? Just to try to class up the joint? Yes. <laughs> if by bouquet you mean the vine of a watermelon, <laughs> then yes. Um... So I don't think that I've ever, like, I've eaten that white part of the watermelon when it gets, like, close to the rind, but I don't think I've ever actually eaten the part that's, like, green on the outside. Is that what you're talking about when you say the rind? I kind of mean the white part. Okay, because I was like, I'm not sure I've ever eaten rind. I think people pickle that and eat that. I could be crazy, and that could have been, like, a weird white person thing that 
I read that sounds about. like a mommy blog thing. Yeah. Of like, you'll never guess what you can do with the rind of a watermelon. It's like, yeah, I can, Karen. Just throw it in some pickling juice. No, people, you can buy it. I don't want to, but you can. Wild. I also don't like sweet pickles in general, so that's just not... That's just not made for me, and that's okay. Anywho! We we don't like it, but it doesn't hurt anyone, so have at it. Yeah. Well... I'm not going to say it doesn't hurt anybody, because I'm sure it hurts somebody. That's just how (laughs) (laughs) capitalism works. Um, But anyway. We're not talking about that. We are talking about... uh, The Umbrella Academy. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The topic that we both remember. (laughs) That we have both read, and a show that we have both watched. Yes. Recently, wink. Um, so, Matthew, what's your history with the Umbrella Academy? So, um, as repeat listeners will know, back in middle school, I loved My Chemical Romance and I loved comic books. So when I heard that Gerard Way was putting out a comic book, it was just like, ah, match made in heaven. <laughs> so I went out and I bought the Apocalypse Suite and tried my best not to show my mom the cover because it's, it's not Vanya naked, but it's like... It's a female it's her form, her, for it's sure. It's her in her suit, and I knew them, that wasn't going to fly. But... um So yeah, I read that, and then Dallas came out, and I didn't get it, and then the TV show came out, and I watched that, and now we're here. (laughs) Uh, What's your history? Um, I also enjoyed My Chemical Romance, Um, not as much as my sister did, so she bought the... (laughs) the uh, comic and I didn't have many thoughts about it when it came out but she was excited so that was good Mm -hmm. Um, and then I don't know it was a few years later I like had this mini renaissance of My Chemical Romance in my life where I started listening to it again more and got interested in the comic and I read it then and it was Still I, fine. <laughs> yeah, it was okay. Um, and then they made a show about it, so I read it again after I found out they were going to make a show. Mm-hmm. Spoiler alert, I prefer the show to the comic. <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to be a big theme of this episode. <laughs> um, because not to disparage the comic it's good but i think the show does some things better than Mm -hmm. the comic does very not very pivotal but like key things it does better than the comic so yeah like characters (laughs) and plot (laughs) um i i think it's interesting that like anytime we talk about like a comic or something it's like it's been your dad but this time it was your sister that oh yeah, <laughs> had my the dad thing that you <laughs> does not care about the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> How, does your dad care about My Chemical Romance though? Because I feel like that's everybody's starting point. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna say no. He kind of doesn't listen to music so much these days. He does that. He does that dad thing where he just listens to the same music he listened to when he was. I guess my age now, which is a weird Spooky. thing to think about. <laughs> but also interesting, because it does mean that when I'm in his position in a few years, that I will only be listening to Squirrel Flower, Phoebe Bridgers, <laughs> and Lucy Dacus, I guess. 
you could do worse. I could do worse. <laughs> you'd be listening to uh, Blink-182. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, it's like, what's worse than Squirrel Flower? <laughs> Blink 182. <laughs> That's um, the two ends of the spectrum. Does your dad know anything about the Umbrella Academy? Um, I assume he vaguely is aware that it exists. Because I think my aunt and uncle, when it first came out, they're big into like the, the artsy stuff. Hmm. So they were like, oh, this great new show came out. And I was like, yeah, it was a comic. <laughs> <laughs> and I felt the burden of being a nerd <laughs> hoisted upon my shoulders again. Just be like, yeah, I know. And I'm sure they told my parents to watch it, and it's not my parents' thing. So I'm sure they didn't watch it, but <laughs> I'm sure he's aware. I don't know if he's aware that he's aware, but he's aware. <laughs> kind of alluded to it before mm-hmm. but uh what is your opinion on the comic so the comic i think is a fun artistic expression mm-hmm. i think that it is very disjointed and it seems very like set scenes that kind of connect but not in a way that makes it easy to read a lot happens and i it is kind of just the media that Mm. it is i mean he can't it's difficult to have like a huge built out plot Mm. in a single comic (laughs) in like a single graphic novel how many pages is it? Because I know you have it with you. That's what I was just... Oh, it, they're not numbered. <laughs> <laughs> no, Gerard. <laughs> but I mean, typically, like, an issue of a comic is maybe, like, 20 pages. So I'd say there's probably, like, 120. Okay. Give or take. Um, maybe a little more. I like the stylization. I think that that's really fun. I think that he does that really well. But I... For me, it's very hard to, the comic is is hard for me to, like, read and, like, enjoy as a set story. What about you? What are your thoughts on the comic? So, I will agree with all your points. Mm -hmm. And um, I think uh, there, I saw some, like, I hesitate to call it analysis, but, like, people talking about the comic before and the way they put it is it's written as if it's an ongoing series so it kind of like just drops you in and doesn't really explain anything Mm -hmm. and um it's it's almost structured like it's just the next part of the umbrella academy story even though it's the first ever instance like (laughs) yeah it, it begins I, I forgot about this until I looked at it again recently, but, it, like, the very first page is some dude just wrestling with an octopus squid thing, and that just kind of happens, and it's not really part of the story or anything. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> this happened, but also on this day, some kids were born. <laughs> and it's just like, okay, that's cool. But, um, yeah, it's definitely very stylized storytelling Mm -hmm. like it's very i don't know that campy is the right word but it's like i don't know it's the first thing they fight in the story is zombie gustav eiffel and the eiffel tower (laughs) yeah which it's it's very like stylized fantasy sci-fi it feels almost parody Or, like, satire about, like, the comedy genre. I don't think it goes that deep. I really think that Gerard Way was like, hey, I like writing music. 
I have these characters in mind. Let's make a comic. I think, so, Gerard Way, I've heard, really enjoys comic books and, like, Doom Patrol. Mm -hmm. If you know what that is. And, like, that's his, I think that's his favorite. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think, if I remember right, before My Chemical Romance, he was, like, a cartoonist. Was he? I didn't know that. Yeah, I think... I think he was working on, like, a Nickelodeon show, and then 9-11 happened, and he stopped doing that to start My Chemical Romance. But what was I saying? Oh, um, I think it's more of, like, a love letter to comics, more so than, like, a parody. It's like fan fiction. It's basically fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> All OCs fan fiction, or as some people call that, a new idea. Yeah. <laughs> Twilight, um, <laughs> but or no, Twilight's not the fan fiction. Fifty Shades of Grey is. Oh no, <laughs> <laughs> is this Fifty Shades of Grey? Because oh, I'm not gonna think about that too hard. No, um, let's just move past that thought. <laughs> but it it does very much read like, oh, this was written by somebody who just really loves comic books, and is fine with them just doing buck wild things and not really explaining it. And yeah, so it, it does read a little disjointed because it's written like that. But yeah, the, the art is like top notch cartoony sort of. Yeah. Like, it's, it's very much that like exaggerated expression and like, the way a human body can move doesn't really matter as long as it looks cool <laughs> on yeah. the page. Yeah. Um, and like heavy shadows and bright primary colors and yeah. Yeah. Like classic comic book. I also really like that the characters um, have very distinct looks. Like none of them <laughs> look the same. <laughs> mm -hmm. And none of them really look like the characters in the show except for Five, probably. Well, it's just because it's a boy. <laughs> All <laughs> small boys boy. look the same. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is uh, one point that maybe is against the comic book is while they look very distinct, they're all just white people, <laughs> which that isn't is great. Because it's supposed to be like children born all around the world and then... The seven you, is it seven? No, it's nine. No, it's seven. How many is it? Oh God, Ryan, <laughs> I'm a fake fan. There's there's seven. Because yeah. Vanya's seven, right? Yes. But yeah, it's like the seven that they picked is the white kids. Yeah. Yeah. So that's not great. But yeah, that's just comics, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, but um. So having said that, how how do you feel about the show? I really like the show. Especially, so season one and two are out currently, um, and they have been out for a while, but we're just talking about season one today. Mm -hmm. um, season one slash book one. Um, I really liked the characters. I thought that they were better fleshed out. I know that some people have issues with the fact that, like, not all of their powers are explained fully. Like, you had mm -hmm. alluded to <laughs> Knife Boy. <laughs> to all of a sudden, Diego can control, like, metal? Yeah. I Which, I guess, maybe... I don't remember if he's... if it, Like, if they've shown him doing that since the beginning but it i remember okay we're gonna talk about season two for just a second but <laughs> at the end of season two all of a sudden he can like control where his knife goes as opposed like not necessarily front to back but like he can bullet bend it you know yeah I'm, like wanted <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it feels like it just kind of comes out of nowhere but maybe i'm just not maybe i just didn't pay attention which if there's anything the show has proven it's I don't pay attention. <laughs> Just listen to the Pride and Prejudice episode. 
Um, but no, I really like the characters, and I like, I appreciate like the stylization of the show too. It has mm-hmm. like a very effective tone, and I really like the cast. I I do appreciate that they chose to have more than just white people being mm-hmm. the main characters. And as far as like an ensemble cast, I really like the way that they interact with each other. Um. I don't know, like, that sibling bond is always kind of interesting to me. I appreciate it. As someone who has siblings, I really appreciate sibling dynamics played out in media. It's selfish of me, I'm sure, but there are just yeah, moments like that that I, I think are really poignant and cute. Um, The phrase sibling bond did remind me of a fun storyline where Allison and Luther date and... Yeah, like, that's they're not, not great. They're not biological siblings, but... We think. Two of them date. And there's a fun point in the series where it's like, they go, technically it's not incest. And <laughs> I think Diego goes like, if you have to say technically, it's not great. I think that... Wasn't that Klaus? I think Maybe that it was, was Klaus. Season two, Klaus. It's when they're in the We're, salon. Yeah. <laughs> we might have to talk about season two, because I... <laughs> was worried about season two, and then I feel like it had some moments that I thought were just grand. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect with season two because I hadn't read the book. But yeah, it was... As someone who had done both. No, the book came out... Did it come out after season two, for some reason? No, it it came out, uh, I think back when we were still in high school. Oh, I just, it wasn't on my uh, radar. So I didn't read it till after, but I don't think that the two don't connect <laughs> enough. <laughs> to compare them? Yeah, like you could read them both separately and understand the story completely differently. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the big reason for that is spoilers. I think in the book, not having read... The second book, Vanya's not in it, right? At all? Or is, she, mm. is Vanya? It's been a hot minute since I've read the second one, and I don't read media correctly. <laughs> 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 I don't remember her being in it, but I also don't remember her not being in it. Because, <laughs> I mean, at the end of Apocalypse Suite, she is... She is got. Yeah, so. she gets got, but I want to say... We're gonna Google it. <laughs> is oh, yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know if she's talking. What? Uh, Who's talking? Oh wait, no, she's not dead. My whole life is a lie. She's not dead. Yeah, because I remember. Uh, Klaus gets shot in the comic. Um, yeah, but he's like up enough to stop the moon. This isn't good <laughs> podcasting. But there's this panel where they're like operating on Vanya. Mm-hmm. And it says that uh, her motor skills and memory would return, but they were unsure if she would ever play violin again. Yeah. But in the show... She's definitely there. <laughs> it, yeah, Vanya survives. The show, I think, does the realism versus, like, the the stylized nature of the comic better Mm -hmm. except for i fucking hate what they did with luther (laughs) it's (laughs) gross it is unnatural (laughs) and they should be ashamed of themselves (laughs) because it's like yeah he's you you can't do so in the comics luther's body is basically a big blue gorilla body Mm -hmm. and it's like harry it's like a hairy gorilla body. Yeah. And in the show, it's like a, I don't, it's just like 
a big man body that has a gross amount of hair on it. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't read as a gorilla body. It just looks like a gross... Did you ever see League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? No. That movie? Okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> Never mind, then. <laughs> Luckily, they have it covered up throughout most of it, though. So you don't have to look at it very long. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> would it have really, like... <laughs> made the show that fantastical to have him just be hairy. There are probably special effects artists that worked very hard for that part of the costume and are crying right now <laughs> because you're bashing their hard work. Well, I was crying when I saw it because it was horrible. <laughs> I'm sorry. That that is, this is rough. I'm I uh it was an impossible task. They did what they could. Oh, man. <laughs> just, like, just buy the asset that was Sonic's body from Sonic the Hedgehog. Just, like, slide the beef scale up a little bit. <laughs> and boom. Luther body. I just imagine, like, a, the height is the exact same, just beefy. And then a whole ass... Fuck, what's the actor's name? Tom Hopper? Tom Hopper, just like a normal human-sized head <laughs> on a tiny Sonic buff body. <laughs> okay, so our, our call I'm to action this episode. see if that exists, and this yes. better not awaken anything in me. <laughs> Well, this is the podcast now, just looking up people. <laughs> buff Sonic. <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to say, before we... Yes get the results from the search the call to action is i need everybody listening right now to go out and if you don't have photoshop buy it <laughs> and just send us all your buff sonic body tom hoppers because that's something i need in my life that i didn't know i needed till this very moment no it doesn't exist <laughs> what a shame <laughs> Yes, this is a call to action. I need Buff Sonic. <laughs> with, Buff Sonic with Tom Hopper's head. With Tom Hopper's head. Okay. But yeah, I don't. That's like the one major thing with the show. That's like the one problem I have with the show is that it's not Tom Hopper's head on Buff Sonic's body. <laughs> um. But yeah, the the rest of the cast is really good. Um, mm hmm. I love I can't think. Um, Klaus and Ben's like banter, mm -hmm. like their oh connection is poor perfect. Ben. <laughs> yeah, poor Ben. <laughs> Not gonna talk about season two, but poor Ben. So sad. He goes through a lot. Yeah, um, potentially the most. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Allison goes through a lot. Yeah, that's accurate as well. Luther's just there. <laughs> yeah, do we want to give, like, a rundown of, like, what we remember happening? <laughs> this episode <laughs> is our comic version <laughs> of our podcast, where each bit is <laughs> disjointed. Mm-hmm. There's no through line. <laughs> There's... Uh, so... Are you remembering the show? Yes, let's Is that what we're doing? remember the show. I think I think we covered the comic well enough. Probably not, but we're going to pretend that we did. I mean, the show and the book pretty much follow the same like main story. Mhm. Mm the show adds Hazel and Cha-Cha. I don't think they're in the first book. I think they're in the second book. But, um... Basically... The Umbrella Academy are... Kids that were randomly born. On the same day at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um... And they have superpowers. And were and collected by a bonkers old man. Yeah. Um, and... We're going to call him Good Space Dad. 
as opposed to Bad Space Dad from, uh, or wait, no, Kansas Dad was the bad dad. Space Dad was just kind of Space Dad just steel. died really early. <laughs> you couldn't connect. Not to really space. early though. That's like an hour into the movie. Krypton is still blowing up. It felt like. <laughs> It's it just felt like there's a whole movie. Man of We're not Steel talk is about a little <laughs> movie. Like it just time warps around it. But we're not talking about that. Um, no. So there's seven kids we've established. There's number one Luther, who is strong. He's strong boy. Mm-hmm. There's number. Oh, can I remember? Is Allison number two? Mm-hmm. She's the rumor. Arguably the strongest one, because she can just say, I heard a rumor, and say something, and it becomes true, basically. Yeah, I will say that I like the range. Like, I feel like these are superpowers that are interesting, and you don't, they're not, like, overdone so much. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm sure Except that they Luther. exist elsewhere. Luther's boring. <laughs> Except for... Luther's just aesthetic. Yeah. <laughs> And even that's not that interesting in the show. Um, <laughs> because it's not Buff Sonic. Um, let's see. Who's number three? Is number three... Because I think he orders them... At least in the comic, he orders them based on their usefulness. Quote, unquote. Is Diego number two? I feel like he's number five. No, Klaus is number no, five. No, number five's number five. <laughs> I feel oh. like he's... <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. Um, he's he's middle. Okay. He's like f- four or... Is Ben number three? All right. According to Wikipedia, number one is Luther, is Luther a.k.a. Space Boy in the comic. Number two mm-hmm. is Diego, the Kraken. Yeah, his... <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's talk about this for a second. So Diego's codename is the Kraken, but then Ben, whose superpower is he has, like, tentacles come out of his chest, uh-huh. is named... Oh, what's his name? The Horror. The Horror. What? What? I also, like, I don't feel like, uh, Diego's name just makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Just throwing knives. Ben should have been the Kraken. Ben should have yeah, been Diego the Kraken. Yeah, <laughs> Diego should have been Knife Boy. <laughs> <laughs> My good, good um, sword son. So he's number three? No, he's number two. two. Diego is two. And then... Maybe they're not ordered based on usefulness. Or maybe, no. Because I was thinking that's the reason Vanya's number seven is because he wants her to think she's not useful. Yeah. I I think that that's right for the... I think that's right. I think that that's the reasoning. I just think that he underestimated how useful... Because it's also based on, like, how he views people. So, like... Yeah, I guess that's true. It's he his, wouldn't think... It's his value. Yeah. Not... Yeah. Okay. Not lo- not okay. based in logic, based on this one old man's idea. Yeah. Who spoiler is an alien? Maybe. <laughs> um. So is Allison number three? Allison is yeah. number three. So Klaus would be number six. I also like how all of them have the in their comic name except for Luther. <laughs> Space boy. <laughs> well, except his nickname comes after their children, right? Because it's because he got sent to the moon. <laughs> that are hard to just moon. like, I Shut know who's in this fucker to the moon. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, we we are not doing a comprehensive <laughs> list here. So it's... <laughs> It's Space Boy the Kraken, the rumor. Klaus is number four. Klaus is number four. Yeah, the seance. The seance. And the number five's the child. The boy. 
or the boy. You're thinking of Baby Yoda. Ooh, I, I learned it's called Yoda. Grogu today. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Yep, Grogu. <laughs> That's a dumb name. <laughs> John Favreau has said it's okay to call him Baby Yoda, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the boy, never and then fun. Ben, and then Ben, the horror. The horror, and then, and then Vanya. Vanya, the white violin. Mm-hmm. Which her name so, yeah. comes way later. That was another thing that was a little confusing. Was the naming structure because they go by like rumor, kraken, seance in the comics. They don't really use. Mm-hmm. I don't. 100% yeah, they go by their like know that Christian they names. have <laughs> like normal people names. <laughs> In the comic. I'm trying Except to think. for Vanya. I don't think... I think they do have normal people names. I don't think they ever use them, though. Yeah. Five Unlike doesn't. The Five show. was fine with just being... The boy. Yeah, he's he's cool with that number system. Um. Does he have a real name in the show? No. No. No, uh, according to Wikipedia, his parentheses, which is where their names are, is five Hargre- Hargreaves. <laughs> well, that solves that. <laughs> um, so, let's see. We've kind of alluded to whose powers are what. I think the only ones we haven't said are five can time travel and, like, move around and teleport. Mm-hmm. And Klaus... Can summon dead people? Yes. Spirits and Ben stuff? had Kraken arms, but he died at a very young age. Mm-hmm. I did appreciate that he uh, grew with them, like his ghost self. Because I feel like that would be weird having two small children. <laughs> <laughs> Too many children. <laughs> Stuck in this family of adult kids. Yeah, but aren't they all children, really? I mean, yeah, Hargreaves did a lot of shit to them. <laughs> um, but yeah, so basically, Vanya writes like an expose book spilling all the tea. Mm-hmm. And then some dude, for reasons I don't remember in the show, turns her evil? Yeah, because the monocle or Reginald or whatever turned him down. Reggie. Yeah. That rascally Reggie. Um, Rage. He, like, turned him down. He's, like, the exact same age, was born the same day as Vanya and the others. And he had, like, a shitty home life, and so he... He wanted to be in the the group. Umbrella Academy, yes. Mm Mm-hmm. And he wasn't right. special enough. Um, so, Daddy dies, and they all get back together, and stuff happens, and Vanya turns evil, but then, <laughs> then she plays a concert because she uses her violin to like focus her powers, which are just sort of unspecified telekinesis slash reality bending. Yeah. Much like Wanda in the Marvel <laughs> Cinematic Universe <laughs> show WandaVision. Um, and then the apocalypse. Oh, I've left out an important part, which is that at some point in their childhood, five disappears into the future and he realizes that it's the apocalypse, and then he comes back and tries to stop it. And then Vanya is the apocalypse. Well, really, they're all the apocalypse. The <laughs> apocalypse was the family we met along the way. <laughs> um, and then yada, yada, yada. They have a fight in a bowling alley. Um, shit gets real. And then... Like, seconds before the apocalypse, they 
try to travel back in time, and that's where season two picks up. Yeah. I think I I left out a lot of stuff. Yeah, there's a lot a lot that happens. But that's like the that's the broad strokes. Yeah. Plot. Um, I feel like something I thought was like a really interesting exploration was like the concept of like favoritism and how uh, trauma affected each of them very differently. Mm-hmm. Um, we alluded to <laughs> how Luther needed to shut up about being sent to the moon <laughs> because other siblings were like locked away and gaslit and like <laughs> killed. <laughs> but no, I mean, Hargreaves is not a fit parent. We also have not talked about mom or Pogo. <laughs> oh, yeah. At all. Um, so, mom's a robot and Pogo's a monkey. <laughs> I guess he's a chimp. <laughs> and that's the rest of the story. <laughs> no, there's, I mean, a, a lot happens. <laughs> I think that Vanya, like her story, I don't know. I didn't, I, from a storytelling perspective, I had issue with the, the logic behind some of her actions right towards the end. It's so like basically Vanya had been gaslit her whole life that she was not special like her siblings. Like she was the mistake that Hargreaves just kind of kept. Which, knowing his character, if she, like, she should have realized something, she shouldn't have. I'm not gonna, she has been told her whole life she wasn't special, like, that's not her fault. But from an outsider perspective, there's no way he would have kept her because of, like, the personality that he has. Like, if she was actually useless, Mm -hmm. he would have just sent her off, like. Yeah, but, I mean... She was a child, so I'm not sure that... No, she was a child, and she was yeah. under the effect of Allison's um, rumor. rumor. Yeah. Uh, so that's 100% not her fault. I did not like that... Because logically, to me, it doesn't make sense that she would have taken out her anger on Allison at the end. And, like... Because she, like, slit Allison's throat with her violin bow. I th- think so two thoughts Mm -hmm. one it's because that's what happens in the comic yeah i think i think they're trying to hit the same story point even if it's not like the same even if it doesn't necessarily make logical sense yeah i think two wasn't allison trying to stop her from doing something and with a rumor and that's why she did that with Allison. Yes, but I just I don't know cuz I feel like Vanya spent like the whole time trying really hard to be like accepted by her siblings and like trying to like and so just like logically for me as a character choice it seemed weird that I also like yeah, when she's like swept up and like this all happens within like a week, doesn't it? Like it's within days that all of this information comes out. Like she goes off her medicine, realizes she actually has power. <laughs> Mhm. Yeah, I think I think the timeline is very short. Um So like I I can understand how it would get to that. It's just I didn't I didn't like it, so it, it shouldn't have happened. <laughs> yeah, it it feel it, did it feel kind of uh What do I want to say? Like mm, shoehorn not shoehorned but forced maybe yeah yeah like they were trying to hit the the plot point from the book and they were gonna make it work even if the show didn't want it to go that way yeah i would i would say that that's probably an accurate it just it felt kind of forced and pushed and not really as far as like everything else that progressed naturally it seemed a little Mm -hmm. hinky um that part was a little interesting. I've really loved the way that um, Klaus and Ben, like I loved their companionship. I feel like that grew mm-hmm. a lot in the second series, but we're not talking about that one. Yeah. Well, then um, 
Never mind. I was going to say, we might see Ben a lot more in the third season, but is it really Ben? <laughs> Who knows? Who Spooky. Knows? Um, golly, this is a weird show to talk about. <laughs> I've just realized that we've kind of, like, accidentally stumbled onto a theme of ensemble weird Dark Horse comic adaptations <laughs> <laughs> in this last couple episodes. I mean... When they're right, they're right, I guess. <laughs> what does that say about us as media consumers that we're drawn to that kind of... Means that we were born in the early 2000s? <laughs> <laughs> or late 90s, early 2000s? Technically, we were born early mid-90s. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Do I look like I know my own age? No, I barely know my age, it feels like. It's fine. We're pushing through. Yeah. Whenever anybody asks me my age, I have to think about it. And then, like, I have that anxiety of, like, they're going to think I'm lying, but I'm just dumb. <laughs> <laughs> I had this moment, I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast, I'm pretty sure I've told you before, where I was in, like, it honestly might have been grad school. Like pretty far removed from being like I wasn't newly 21 I was walking and talking with somebody from a class and they're like we had said something I was like I'm not that old and they're like wait how old are you and I confidently said 15 (laughs) and I was just like no (laughs) I'm like 23 like I don't know why (laughs) I don't know (laughs) But it was just like this like yeah. internal panic of like, I'm 15. I'm like, that's not even accurate. I don't identify with 15 year olds. I don't understand them. And honestly, they scare me a little bit. As we know from the My Chemical Romance episode. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I relate heavily to not ever remembering how old I am. I also have a birthday coming up and I just don't love that. <laughs> Uh, pandemic birthday two, electric boogaloo. Woo! <laughs> uh. <laughs> um <laughs> what else is there to say about the umbrella academy um so in terms of the adaptation have we talked about how well we think it was adap- adapted from the book to the show indirectly probably i don't know so as far as like a direct adaptation from comic to series i think that it veers off a lot But I think it veers off in a way that makes it better. Mm -hmm. Like, I think think that if it was true to the comics, it would not have been a successful TV series. Yeah, I think it's a good show, but it's not necessarily a good adaptation, if that makes sense. Which I think is probably preferable. Because I'm not sure how well some of the comic would translate to a... It, like live action TV series. Mm-hmm. So we um, talked about the Umbrella Academy. <laughs> yeah, as per usual, the show's just kind of petering out. <laughs> 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 no real ending, just kind of like a. Uh, we're just kind of wandering into the sunset <laughs> while the Incredible Hulk music plays. <laughs> On to our next adventure. <laughs> Not really an ending, but not really a beginning. Just sort of a. <laughs> We're just a consistent a... middle forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So, what do you have any final thoughts about Umbrella Academy, Matthew? Um. Good show, bad adaptation, but that's the way I would prefer it. Um. I think. The the book is a I I might be losing my voice so bear with me I'm very sorry listening audience but um uh I think the book is a nice sort of skeleton to build off of 
And I think the show does it well. And that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Ryan, final thoughts? Uh, this show's got everything. It's got Ghost Boys. It's got... Um, chimpanzees. Chimpanzees, robot moms. I would watch it again. <laughs> Technically, it's not incest. <laughs> I hate that. I didn't like that storyline, though, personally. I think Droadway has even come out and said that he's not a fan of it so much anymore. <laughs> so this has been Rhetorical Magic Cocktail Hour. Um, we wrapped it up, right? <laughs> Enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're real sorry about this one guys we're both kind of feeling <laughs> yeah i'm coming off being sick and ryan i'm sure has stuff going on as well <laughs> so um if you want to follow us just type at rhetorical magic into your favorite social media maybe not favorite just the social media you use <laughs> and we'll be there um, we'll be there probably um be good to one another uh and like we say at the end of every episode clink, clink. oh moscow meal cups aren't good for me <laughs> it's fine i only have aluminum too let's chill aluminum saying <laughs> i got distracted by looking at a book <laughs> um we were talking about the show the show and what we liked about it <laughs> <laughs> it's been this a week be, friends <laughs> yeah this this one's gonna be the real like award-winning hard-hitting episode <laughs> where we're very very cognizant very control in control of what we're thinking okay but yeah um